Hi, I'm Barnat from Woodburn Carvings and I want to show you one of the easiest, simple and affordable ways to sharpen your chip carving knife. There are different options for sharpening. Today we will use sandpaper, green compound, leather and a sharpening system. I've already cut the sandpaper to the size of my sharpening system from spoon carving with Tom. What's good about glass is that it will always stay flat. We've also got green compound, a piece of leather glued to a plywood piece, a water spy bottle, the knife that we're going to use, and a removable glue spray bottle. Let's talk about knives. There are several brands, but I mainly work with these two, File Tools and Glotsley. In this video, we will be sharpening a File Tools chip carving knife. A very good knife, but it needs sharpening before use, since it's not properly sharpened from store. And here's Clotsley, a brand which sells already sharpened knives from store. They are a bit more expensive, but you can use them right out of the box. They also offer a knife that, like file, needs a sharpening before we start carving. There are other brands like FlexCut or Two Cherry Tools who also have cheap carving knives, but I don't know too much about them. We will see two options. We will sharpen a file tools knife which has never been sharpened, and later we will talk on how to sharpen a knife that's already been sharpened. This is a brand new knife, so we will start with a 400 grit sandpaper. We use the spray glue to apply the product and place the sandpaper on top of the glass tile or sharpening system. We add some water drops and we place the knife flat on the surface. The movement that we have to do is this one. The idea behind this movement, in which we add an angle of about 10 degrees as we move forwards, is to give the edge of the knife a bullet shape. Chip carving knives work best with a bullet shape which gives us more consistency on the edge, otherwise the tip of the knife would be too fragile and break or bend often. We begin by placing the knife flat on the surface and as we move forward we rock the knife to a 10 degree angle at the end of the slide. When sharpening we have two options, we can slide the knife one way, pull it up and repeat the process or make back and forward movements. When we make back and forward movements, at some point the knife might scratch the sandpaper. With practice, we should be able to avoid it most of the time. Let me show you how it's done. I'm adding a 10 degree angle as I move forward and on the way back I put the blade flat to the surface at the starting point. By doing it this way, we do a quicker sharpening. The most important part of the sharpening is the bore. The bore is the excess of material that we get on the other side of the edge as we abrase the metal on one side. As we sharpen our knife, we abrase the metal from this side of the knife and the excess is going on the other side. For you to understand, I will show you how I got a burr on this knife that I have previously worked on. Here's two knives, the Clotsley one, which is already sharpened, and the file knife with burr, which can be seen by the thin white line right at the edge of the knife. Another way to notice the burr is by gently passing our finger through the edge and we will notice a rough texture and hear a scratchy noise. Once we got the burr on one side, we must repeat the process for the other side of the blade. I will sharpen the knife making back and forward movements. You can try whichever is easier for you. You can make one slide, pull up the knife and repeat, or try the back and forward movements. It's important to notice the burr on all of the edge of the blade. In this case, I already can feel the burr on this side. Now I will repeat the same process for the other side of the knife. See, 
Here, my knife scratched the sandpaper. It can happen. I keep adding the 10 degrees angle as I make the back and forward movements. I have now noticed the burr on both sides of the blade. Now we need to repeat the process with a countdown on each one of the sides. For example, five slides on one side, five slides on the other one, and then four, three, two, until we reach to the number one. This way we end up defining the edge of the blade. What we achieve by this countdown is to make the burr dance from side to side of the edge. As we move to higher grid, the burr will slowly disappear. Now that we finish sharpening with a 400 grid, we will move to the 800 grid. We should double the grid that we have previously used during the sharpening. If we make smaller increments, the process of the sharpening is slower and we can barely feel any difference. I want to show you how easy it is to clean the glass tile if we use a removable glue spray. With some kitchen paper and water, we've got a clean surface. Now we will repeat the same process with the 800 grit sandpaper. Add some water drops and we repeat the same process. We start with flat surface and as we make the slide, we add the 10 degree angle. It is important to check that the surface we are using is completely fat and avoid any kind of tiny materials that could affect or modify the sharpening surface. I now feel a slightly less noticeable burr since I've used a higher grit, which allows me to move to the other side of the blade. See, again my knife scratched the sandpaper. Even if you practice for a while, it can happen. This scratch is affecting the surface and is not completely flat on this area, so I will only use this side of the paper. Here, if you pay attention, when I slide the knife on this side, the scratch is affecting the surface. I can feel the burr on both sides and I can start the countdown. We can start from many slides as we want, but I would recommend to start minimum with five. We will now repeat the exact same process with the 1500 and 3000 grids. I will skip this process to the next step, which is stropping. As we move to higher grids, the burr will be less noticeable. It's normal to see residue over the sandpaper. These are the particles of the blade that we are sharpening. As you can see, I cut myself. Uh, I wasn't paying attention while cleaning the knife, so be careful and take care while handling sharp knives. Let's move on. The last step to have a properly sharpened knife is to strop. Leather has two sides, grain side and flesh side. In this system, we have the flesh side already glued onto the plywood piece. It's on this side in which we apply our polishing compound. In this case, we are using green compound. There are other polishing compounds in the market. There are some that come as a paste, and by applying a few drops to the leather, we are good to go. Polishing compounds and pastes are slightly abrasive, and they help us to remove any bits of remaining burr and define and polish the edge of the blade. Contrary to the sharpening process, when stropping, we will keep the knife flat during the whole slide. We do not add any angle whatsoever while stropping. For stropping, we will already start with the countdown from 10 slides to 1, for example. As I finish each strop, I pull up the knife without adding any angle. I've already completed the countdown on the flesh side, 
Now I will repeat the process on the grain side, without adding any product. While strapping, we should apply medium pressure. As we finish strapping on the grain side, our knife should already be sharp. Now that I've shown you how to sharpen a chip carving knife, I will give you some observations. If I forgot anything, we can talk about it in the comments. If we have a knife that's already been sharpened, we can start sharpening from an 800 grit. If we have a damaged knife, we should indeed start with a smaller grit, such as 400. We don't need to spend a lot of money on a sharpening system. With a glass tile and some leather, we are good to go. As you can find in my chip carving kits, which include a glass tile and leather glued to a plywood piece. Each sandpaper sheet can be used once. As we sharpen, we remove the grit from the paper and it becomes less effective. As we are carving, if we notice the knife could cut better, we can always drop it every once in a while and it will improve the cutting experience. I personally have learned a lot from these people. Thanks to the content that they've shared on social media, I've learned how to sharpen my knives and tools. After all this process and cutting my finger, I hope that you understood how to currently sharpen a chip carving knife. For any questions, you can always reach out to me and see you soon.